Welcome back. We're talking about sample means here. We were talking about the heights of 50 students in downstate Illinois. Um, and so we're going to formalize this a bit so we can hopefully then use it a little bit more consistently with what's going on. So first things first, the first big idea is the sampling distribution of x bar. So what ends up happening is, as we found out, the centers stay the same. So this idea that the sample mean, the mean of the samples is going to be the same as the mean of the population. That's going to be extremely helpful to know as we continue on through our junior statistics. And for the variability, what ends up happening is remember how the we kind of chatted about how the bigger the size is, the mean's going to shift a little bit. And so what you do is you're going to take the standard deviation of the population, we're going to divide it by the square root of n. And part of that's because this is already divided by, or already, you already have taken the square root of um, variance. And so that one, that's the reason why we have to do it. Okay. Now, in terms of the graph itself, the shape is going to be approximately normal if, okay, so if the population is approximately normal, the sampling distribution of x bar is also going to be approximately normal. So again, you would end up drawing a normal curve, your norms here, so you've got the mean of x bar, and then you also have the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And then your z-score is just going to, again, so it's going to be your score minus um, the mean divided by the standard deviation. This formula, again, however, has all the different information substituted in. So don't worry about that. And again, as I've said before, oftentimes you're asked to solve out for these things so in terms of, you know, memorizing this, that whole idea of z being, you know, x minus your mean divided by your standard deviation. Well, that was bad mixing of notation. X, like we did before, so x minus mu divided by sigma, um, is going to continue on and on. Okay, now for your practice question here, um, we're going to talk about YouTube viewing. And this was probably, yeah, I'm going to guess this has gone up since then. But, so every day, people watch 1 billion hours on YouTube. So it works out to about 8.4 minutes per day. For U.S. teens, they take in approximately, they watch about 18.5 minutes a day. And there's a standard deviation of 5.3. So a couple of things here before you guys get started. These are the important things. So this up here is going to be your mu, because we're talking about the population because it says four US teens, that's a population there. And then down over here, this 5.3 minutes, that is going to be your sigma, okay? So, hit pause, take a second, run through the problems, come on back and we'll see how you did. Hey, you didn't hit pause fast enough. Okay, here we go. So, the first question is find the probability that A, so a single one, so N is equal to one here. Um, a randomly U.S. teen watches YouTube for more than 25 minutes in a given day. So you've got your normal curve. Our standard deviation and mean is just going to be the population numbers. Um, because, let's face it, 5.3 divided, well, first of all, the means are going to stay the same even if you're doing samples. Secondly, 5.3 divided by square root of 1 is 5.3. And third of all, it's just one person from the population. So you've got your z-score here. So when we plug this in, we end up getting a z-score of 1.23. Now, if you end up using table A, you're going to get 1 minus 0 0.907, so we get 10.93, or 10.93 percent, you have a probability of 0 0.0123. And if you're going to use your calculator, normal CDF, 1.23, 10 to the huge power, 0, 1, and again, those are all good ones. Okay, so about a 10 percent chance that if you pick one student randomly that they're watching at least 25 minutes. Now, what happens if we take a sample of 10? So in this context, this is now my mu and value. For those of you downloading my notes, I apologize. Somehow the x bar didn't come through and it got shifted over to a PDF. So these should be x bars. Um, so first of all, the mean of the sample distribution, like we set up above, is just going to be the same as the mean of the population. So the mean of this sampling of groups of 10 is going to be 18.5 minutes. Now, in terms of calculating and interpreting the standard deviation, we have to first of all make sure the 10% condition is being met. The 10% condition, remember, says that, says that you're not taking any more than 10% of the population. So that means that we don't have to replace any. Um, so, and one way you can write it is this, 10 is less than or equal to 1 over 10 of all US teens. I have also seen somebody do it like this. So they can go like 10 times 10 is equal to 100, and that is less than all US teens. So if that's an easier way for you to do it, that's okay. okay. Um, 
So sigma of x bar is equal to sigma over e squared of n. So that means I'm going to take this standard deviation of 5.3 divided by the square root of 10. And that's going to give me a new standard deviation of 1.676. Now notice, I mean, when you compare it to the original, we've already did, now that's already just shrunk in a whole bunch. So if you think about what's going to happen, that should start if, you know, and we're going to eventually ask about this uh, 25 minutes or more again, that's going to drive this number up because the z value should go up. So anyway, foreshadowing, I guess. The mean number of, so the interpretation here is the mean number of minutes spent watching YouTube in a sample of 10 U.S. teenagers typically varies by 1.676 minutes from the mean of 18.5 minutes. Okay. And then down here, we're talking about what happens, what are the chances are, find the probability that the mean amount of time spent watching YouTube for teens exceeds 25 minutes. So same problem as above, as up here except that now we're doing it with a group of 10. Okay, so this is again from the sample. So because of that, we're gonna be using the 1.676 standard deviation. Everything else is pretty much the same. You do want to write out the formula by itself first. That's one of the things the graders check. And then down here, now notice here, I'm just go ahead, since we calculated it up here in part C, I'm just using the 1.676 down here. So when I go through and I calculate this, my new z-score is now 3.8. Now, some people always ask, well, why do we always find z-scores? I mean, why can't I just type in these numbers into my CDFs? One of the best reasons is this. You kind of then have a better idea of what to expect. When you have a z-score of 1.23, you're going to be like, okay, that's probably, I mean, it's going to be a relatively large number because this, you're only 1.23, three standard deviations away. But like right here, now that you automatically know it's 3.88, you know that what you're coming up with is going to be extremely small or extremely large, depending upon what side you're shading. Um, but that's kind of one of those good double checks that you can go through and do, in addition to understanding that you're showing that you understand what's going on. But anyway, so here um, you get 3.88. By table A, that's 0.9998. So you get less, so the probability of this happening is going to be less than 0.0002. You get something similar here again if you were on the normal CDF for 3.88 large numbers. Okay. So hopefully that helps. We've got a couple more lessons here that are going to be fairly central that's going to help set us up what we're going to be doing in more chapters. I say that a lot. Well, because it is true. So um, anyway, if you have any questions, please drop them down below. Thanks as always for all your comments. Um, and subscribe, share with your friends, show your parents, show your dog, whatever. So we'll talk to you soon.